Hello everybody, it's Sylvie. Welcome or welcome back to Tarot Magpie. I hope you are doing all kinds of good. I have an unboxing for you today. This was unexpected for me. So as I said in my beginning of the year goals, tarot resolutions, whatever that was video, I am trying to limit the amount of decks I bring in this year. I'm not doing any kind of intentional or like strict depth here or low buy, but I am trying to basically not impulse buy decks, which is exactly what I did today. So I kind of broke my own rule, but this is a deck I've had my eye on for a bit. I've nearly bought it a couple times. This came out last year. I think this is Tarot of Tales by Melinda Lee Holm and it's Seiko, Seiko Books. But um, if you look at this label here, this was £10. This deck retails for much more than that. Um, I think it retails for £30. I've not seen it for less than about £25 anywhere else. So it was £9.99. I couldn't help myself. Um, well, I could have helped myself, but I decided not to. So I'm going to do an unboxing, flip through, let you know my thoughts on the deck, on the guidebook, and then probably play with some pairs because that for me is the most fun part of getting a new deck is like, is starting to play with it a bit. So I will jump straight in. All right, um, we seem to have a confusing amount of boxes in this box. Right, Ow. that outer box is, so this outer slipcase had the title, but this is just the box. It's got it on the spine. This is a nice box. <laughs> I do like a box. So, hardcover guidebook that looks like a fairly ch oh it's mostly illustrations so. though interesting and then the deck is in yet another box my god oh this is nice though it's a two piece cool so I will keep it in that box and then <laughs> this is going to be I don't know. I'll keep something in it because that's cute. This is also just much easier to store. I can keep this on my shelf and this with my other decks. So I'm going to have a quick flip through. Ooh, I really like this. Um, it's the same as the tree. Like, I just think it's pretty. <laughs> I really like the illustration style. So from what I remember of this, it's animal based and it's kind of story fairy tale vibes. And it looks like we've got some keywords for each card and then how to interpret that card from different like perspectives. So maybe for different kinds of reading or different contexts. Got a few fairly straightforward spreads. Your story, writing the finding. Okay, this, I'm excited, right. But I will have a flip through the cards. That doesn't fit very tightly, but I'm really nitpicking at this point. Ooh, that's nasty cardstock though. Okay, we'll zoom. Got a paper band. <laughs> These are the backs. Ooh, I didn't realize I was so close to the lens. These are the backs, I may be a bit too zoomed in, which are stunning. It's not printed straight. This is also not good cardstock but it doesn't feel too thick. So hopefully it will still be shuffleable, but this is not nice cardstock. Um, it's really clumpy, but hopefully that will break in. It's also a little bit dented on the full, but like I'm gonna, I'm gonna dent my cards eventually. So, right, so this is our full. We've got the like jester clown kind of vibes with it and I quite like I quite like how he's he's balancing on the world as opposed to the edge of a cliff but it still evokes the same kind of feeling for me and like these you could see them as the rays of the sun and the right away smith I really like the art style of this oh we've got little mushrooms in the corners and some some borders that I'm not sure are necessary. Or rather, the black borders are not necessary with these borders as well, but are the miners. Yeah, they've all got, I really like these intricate drawn borders. I don't care so much for the black borders around the edge. Might be a candidate for a trim, 
but that is a future, <laughs> a future problem. Okay, this magician. I really like this. This is a bit of like a, maybe not a mad scientist. This reminds me of the magician from the horror tower, which does have that like mad scientist kind of, kind of energy to it. Whereas here we've got potions and books and I'm trying to see if these look like anything in particular, but if they do, I can't tell what. And then, yeah, so we're, we're making potions, we're crafting. We've still got the, the one hand kind of pointed up and the one pointed down, holding a wand. So yeah, it references the Rider Waite Smiths quite reasonably closely. The High Priestess. I like that we can't see what kind of animal this is, that mystery element. And then, are we lighting a candle? I guess so. It's a little bit hard to tell what's happening in this card. It feels like it's some kind of altar maybe. Got a crescent moon. That's very, I like that though. The Empress. Okay, she's lovely. She's in a garden, she's planting. This is a much more active empress than we often see, which like, I don't mind the um, the, the passivity of the empress in most decks. Like, you know, she's luxuriating, she's comfortable. That's very Venusian, but I do like that this is a more active empress. Like she's actively creating something, which is nice. And she's just cute. Like her little gloves. I love that. The Emperor. I like this Emperor as well. I feel like he's also quite like active in his role as Emperor instead of just sitting on a throne. He's like overseeing some planning. I like that it's a map. We've still got the, the squareness of the table for that platform that he usually sits on. Um, but the map also, I like... I think of the emperor a lot as as being about um, boundaries and limits of responsibility and knowing like what's your problem and what is outside of your control, like that element of, of the control and power of the emperor. So the map really evokes that for me because obviously maps are all about boundaries and, and, and mapping out what your what your responsibilities are. Or of course, quite literally empire. The Hierophant. This one, I will admit, is making slightly less sense to me off the bat. I mean, I'm assuming the cat is supposed to be the figure of the Hierophant and then all these other animals are acolytes awaiting some kind of wisdom. I notice we've got some like there's another cat here. The various different animals are like a mixture of, of prey and predator type animals. So maybe that's supposed to be meaningful. The lovers. I'm sorry, but look at him in his little top hat. And monocle. This is really interesting for the lovers because I'm thinking quite like, um, essential basic terms. A flower requires a pollinator in order to reproduce. So like that side of the lovers, that's really interesting. I have no idea if that was the intention. Or maybe it's more about like a reciprocal relationship. I don't know, that's interesting though. I'm curious to see what the guidebook has to say about that because that definitely is a different take on the lovers than I'm used to seeing. The chariot. Okay, is a coach. Is a coach that maybe is empty because somebody has left, somebody is already on their journey. Interestingly, the chariot feels like a much more passive card here because it's got nobody in it, I think. And the 
chariot is definitely not what I would usually think of as a passive card. I think of the chariot as being very active. It's that, you know, driving forward energy. Whereas the chariot here is stationary and has already been left or maybe it's waiting to collect somebody. But either way, it's a much more moment of stillness that you don't usually see in the chariot. So that's really interesting. I've got to say I'm liking this deck so far. Okay, strength. We have a sleepy time lion reading a book. Intuitively, this makes less sense to me. Um, oh, I love the illustration though. With the like black background of the tree canopy. It's gorgeous. Has the lion tamed himself? Is that what we're getting at? He looks very chill. I'm a little bit jealous. That's cool though. The hermit. This is the first, I was gonna say the first humanish figure, but looking at the, the hand, that looks clawed. So it's not even human, but got the usual, he's cloaked, got the lamp, solitude. I like all the books and the writing that really brings up the, the like inward spiritual journey and um, not transformation, but what's the word I'm looking for? Like a, like a realization or an ascendance of some kind, maybe? Um, if that doesn't sound too pretentious. The Wheel of Fortune. I just yesterday, no, I just yesterday put up a video about my favorite Wheel of Fortune cards in my collection because the Wheel of Fortune is my card of the year for 2024. And usually it looks really boring because it's just a wheel of some kind. And I don't fully know what's going on in this one. Is it, is it like, like the, like the game show Wheel of Fortune? Is that what we're looking at here? And we've got some people who are looking pretty, well, some people, some fish who are looking pretty unimpressed with what's happening, which is kind of the wheel really, isn't it? It's like, well, shit happens and nothing is permanent. So it's really great for the old anxiety, but hey, justice. Oh, cute. The balance of the one bear and the four raccoons got our scales. I also like how, um, and like, again, maybe I'm, I'm really liking this though. This is feeling like a very intuitive deck for me. Um, but I'm reaching a little bit here maybe, but, um, the trees in the background with how straight they are, especially like these ones that are more visible, that has me thinking of the sword injustice as well. That like upright, strong, what have you. I'm so great at descriptions, the what have you. Visually, yes, I'm getting justice. Thematically, not so much. Although mind you, a, a traditional justice thematically, I don't get justice so much. Uh, the hanged man, we've got a bat. We've got a bat who's the right way up though. That is a clever take. Um, I love bats, nothing against bats but I feel like the Hanged Man card should depict something that is not supposed to be upside down. So it feels like a bit of a cop out when a Hanged Man card is just a back. So I'm like, well, he's meant to be upside down. He's having a perfectly normal time. He's not seeing things from a new perspective. He's just chilling. Whereas this bat is, is upside down for a bat. So I like that, that's clever. And I love bats. Death, well, this is a human figure. He's dancing with a tulip. We've got a very desolate landscape. Everything else has been very like detailed so far for the most part. There's been lots of um, life. Whereas here we've got this, this dead looking tree and a, a raven, I suppose. It's a little bit hard to tell. Although the flowers are alive, but the, the land is like cracked and dry. So maybe there's like blossoming through the through the desolate landscape as the like transformation or there's something new coming out of something that's that's died, that's ended. Temperance, we have a unicorn, we have some water. I love the swirly design in the trees, that's gorgeous. Is it giving me temperance? Not especially. Mm. No. What is the, do we have the, is it, um, oh, is it irises? 
irises? Do I mean irises in the tem temperance? Maybe it's in the tempest. Okay, that is not my favorite. And I feel like the reflection, there are other cards where I think a reflection is more interesting thematically and I'm not sure it's adding much to temperance for me. But again, I'll look at the guidebook and see what the guidebook has to say. The devil. Okay, this is like a little bit on the, on the nose, but the idea of the devil being like the shadow, <laughs> like the like your personal shadow and like what you uh, don't want to release or be released from or, or are having trouble rather like releasing um, being a personal shadow and then the devil literally being the shadow. That's quite clever. I'm not sure it's powerful enough for the devil for me though. I think the devil is maybe the trickiest card of the mages to illustrate in a way that I really like. Possibly because I'm not entirely sure what I'm really looking for in a devil card, but like I know it when I see it, which is unhelpful. Okay, the tower. I wish this was a little bit more destructive as well. Like this and the devil being like not that intense and death wasn't that intense either. So I think this deck is definitely erring on the less scary side of things. Because it's already crashed. It looks like it's a ruin. It looks like it's been crashed for a long time, long enough that we've got plants sprouting up from the fallen stones, which I suppose is the, is the like positive side of the tower, isn't it? Like you, something falls down, but something new can come up in its place and it gives you a chance to like start afresh and rebuild things. So maybe that's the new life. I suppose with the fairy tale vibes, towers come up a lot. I'm thinking like Rapunzel. That is the only thing I can think of right now, but I'm sure that there's a lot of a lot of of tower kind of symbols. Not what's the word I'm looking for? It's a trope. But that's not my favorite either. The star. This is very pretty. The sun rising is also quite nice. Well, it looks like it's setting actually. Although is it really that easy to tell? I don't know, the orange sun feels like a sunset. And the fact that it's a star while the sun is either coming up or going down um, makes me think of Venus, because Venus is, is the morning star and the evening star. And the star is z zodiacally, zodiacally, astrologically, the star is the Aquarius card, isn't it? Yeah. There's no water in this one, though. I want to see water in the star card. I'm trying to see if I can make anything out here but it's a little bit too dark. Hmm. All right the moon. I like it. I like these kind of shadowy shapes on the tree that look a bit spooky and scary. The moon is kind of obscured, which I suppose echoes the uh, eclipse in the Rider right Waite Smith. And we've got two different kinds of mushrooms on either side. And I mean, these are very, I, I don't know my mushrooms to start with. And also these are obviously not lifelike illustrations, but these look more like edible mushrooms and these look more like not edible mushrooms, which maybe it's like the, the wolf and the dog a little bit. I don't know. Again, that might be a bit of a reach. And the hesitancy in this rabbit definitely works for the kind of slightly spooky, mysterious, hidden shadowy vibes of the moon. The sun, we have a butterfly emerging from chrysalis. I'm not sure that that is what I would pick for the sun or that the sun is what I would pick for this imagery. Same as like the reflection in the temperance. I feel like that doesn't necessarily work the best for the temperance. I feel like this chrysalis emerging doesn't super work for the sun or it doesn't not work, but it's not quite the sense of, this has got much more of a sense of freedom and and a new chapter and a new start 
whereas the sun, I think of the walled garden, like it's paradise, but it's, it's enclosed, like it's a, a safe place, but it's a walled garden and it's not everything. And you've got to eventually go beyond the wall, whereas this is a much like, like the rest of the imagery of the card is also very open. Like it's a very, the world is your oyster kind of vibe, which I wouldn't necessarily associate with the sun. But I love an illustrated butterfly. Um, metamorphosis is one of my favorite keywords, which again, I wouldn't put with the sun, but like, I like to see it in a deck all the same. Judgment. Is the, is the bun leaving his home? Is he leaving behind the safety of his little armchair and taking his potted plant and golf clubs somewhere new? Which, if that is what's happening, that's a take on judgment I don't think I've seen before. This is a very voluntary move, presumably, from this image. We're not seeing anything that is forcing him to move. This feels like a very voluntary move, which is not the vibes of judgment so much. But again, this seems to be quite a like positive tinged deck, so it makes sense that 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 would be the focus in this card. Okay, and the world. The world is a person going into a cave. I feel like the first half of the majors were so strong and then I really wasn't so sure. <laughs> like the wheel I was iffy on. I liked the hanged man, I liked death. I do quite like the moon, but yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I'm being a bit of a geology nerd about this card because I'm like, oh, these structures are, oh, whatever the kind of cooling is called, where it cools in those like hexagonal structures, like the giant's causeway. Do that. Um, Anyway, I'm, I'm not sure I understand quite what the intention was with this one. Like it's odd to be going into an, I, I get the exploration vibes maybe, the like, um, the cycle has ended, so you start a new cycle, you're like exploring, like you're opening up a new chapter, so that like exploring kind of makes sense, but I don't know. Hmm. I'm not so sure about that one. Okay. Oh, that's pretty. All right. So this is the cups suit of the miner. I'm going to have a sip of tea. That's really beautiful. Aces tend to be pretty straightforward. So, you know, no notes. Two of cups. We have two fish and a jellyfish. The fish look kind of stressed out. Do jellyfish sting fish like they sting people? Are they having a bad time? Three of cups. I'm loving this little underwater tea party. That's extremely cute. And the turtle has a little napkin like he's a waiter. I do love the kind of um, cutesy storybook vibes to the artwork. I mean, okay, I'm gonna be honest. And this is just because fish can't really help it, but they all look a bit um, perturbed. <laughs> they all look a bit su surprised and not necessarily happy, and I think that's just the fish, but hey. Four of Cups, Axolotl. I think I need to read the guidebook. Is he in a bubble? Unsure. Unsure what this card is getting at. I'm not really getting the kind of uh, stagnation, reluctance to change or move forward, necessary, not from the image anyway, I'll see what the guidebook says. Five of cups, yep, that checks out. We have this tsunami uh, sweeping away these trees and I like, I like how much power this gives to the water in this card because obviously uh, the cups are the water suit but I feel like it's difficult sometimes to illustrate or at least for me to read the illustrations in such a way that I'm reading the like power of what the cups represent because 
they're just little cups and like they've been knocked over, sure, in the five of cups, but you don't really get that sense of of magnitude, especially compared to how like emotions can feel so enormous. Whereas this, I think you really get that. So I really like this five of cups. Six of cups, cute. Oh, that is cute. Who are we, a beluga whale? That's a beluga whale, right? Um, and the photos, that's really sweet. Okay, that's adorable, I like that. Do you know what, six of cups is one that is kind of tricky for me. Like, tricky for me, again, tricky for me to read because I can thematically know that it is about more than just nostalgia, but most decks just show the Six of Cups as being about nostalgia and, and memories, which this also is doing. It's nostalgia and memories. But I think maybe there's also a bit of a tinge of like loneliness to this Six of Cups because we've got our whale here looking at these photos he's on his own in this image so it maybe suggests a little bit more all right seven of cups you have another reflection yeah i think reflection works much better in the seven of cups than in temperance but okay what have you got so he's looking at a reflection of himself but his heart is happy in his reflection Oh, that's really tragic. Is he a toad? Is he a frog? I'm unsure. He's wearing a nice little hat. Um, I'm a bit of a, uh, what's the word? I'm a bit pedantic. I like to see seven things in the seven of cups, but that is a bit of personal preference. But I think the idea of like being lost in the, maybe the daydream of what he's envisioning in his reflection that works for the seven of cups it reminds me a little bit of was it it was narcissus right who got lost staring at his own beautiful reflection and like the idea of like being lost in the fantasy and lost in the daydream and not making any like taking any action or making any choices and thus like running out of, of time and choices so I don't dislike it. I'm just petty about the Seven of Cups. Eight of Cups. Is this a... Is this a climate change card? Unsure. Unsure what's happening here. Is this a blue whale? Do you get blue whales in? Oh god, which one is... Is Antarctica the south? I know that the south is where penguins are. Yeah. Do you know what? I don't know. The South Pole. Do you get blue whales that cold? I don't know. I'm unsure about this card, as in I'm unsure what I'm looking at and what's Eight of Cupsy about it. Everyone just looks a little bit lost, which isn't really the theme of the Eight of Cups. Okay, Nine of Cups. We have an octopus. He's crying. Why is the octopus crying? That's not very nine of cups of him. What's up, my guy? Unsure, extremely unsure. The eight and the nine are confusing to me. I will have to see what the guidebook has to say about these two because of course they're supposed to be uh, like story elements or like moments in a like story trope narrative elements so I'm curious as to what these are as to what these are trying to represent but we shall see ten of cups we have some otters holding hands that's extremely adorable I like that they've each got oh because they collect little rocks don't they they collect little pebbles I don't know what kind of otter I don't know enough about otters so I don't know what kind of otter it is that holds hands and collects stones but presumably that's what we've got here but the stones make a rainbow, like you see in the Rider Waite Smith Ten of Cups. So that's really cute. That's adorable. All right, Paige. We have a fish made out of fish. 
but his cup is empty. But he is many, many fish. So does that mean the potential that he usually holds in his cup is in fact just him? Oh, they're in the shape of like legs. And like a little arm, hand on his hip. I mean, this fish has hands, so as if that's the biggest like um, artistic liberty that's been taken <laughs> in this deck. I don't know what the intention behind this was, but I like the idea that like the potential that he's usually holding is multiplied and is him instead of just like one fish in a cup. It's many, many fish that is making up his ability to like walk around and do things. Knight of Cups. These fish all just look kind of pissed off, which is somewhat confusing. He's also wearing a jellyfish. Maybe the jellyfish in the two of cups was actually a good thing. Unsure. I like that he's riding a seahorse though. I do like to see my knights like like mounted on, on a horse or on a something and like moving or not moving in the case of the Knight of Pentacles, but you know what I mean. Queen of Cups. She's chilling. There's not much more to say about her. And King of Cups is also chilling. He has more cups though. This is a pet peeve of mine in a lot of decks, so no particular um this is not particularly a complaint about this deck, but the queen and the king look much the same. The king has more cups. But otherwise, these are basically the same image to me. Like, it's it's a figure chilling with a cup. Which, to be fair, the Rider Waite Smith also is just a figure chilling with a cup. But, like, obviously we're already underwater in both of these, whereas, like, one of the things that um, differentiates them for me in like the Rider Waite Smith is that the king is not in contact with the water, whereas I think the queen has like a foot in the water maybe. But I am being picky. Ooh, swords next, my favorite. Okay, I love this ace. Again, it's pretty straightforward, pretty pretty standard ace, but I like it. The birds are nice. <laughs> Two of Swords. This looks very storybook. This is really sweet. So it, we've got that choice. I also quite like um, the idea that maybe, like, I could read into this as as a bit of an il not illusion of choice necessarily, but there's something in the way that the Two of Swords in the Rider Waite Smith. She's holding those swords up in a way that would be physically uncomfortable to hold them. So there's something about that that just like isn't quite realistic, it's not the word, because that's kind of not the point of tarot. But, oh, I don't know. I can't, I cannot think of the word I'm trying to think of, but there's something about the Two of Swords that's a little bit like, that's a little bit something. And the fact that these doors exist in a tree with apparently nothing behind them also feels a little bit something. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's my explanation of that one. Three of Swords. It feels like an argument, which honestly actually maybe makes a little bit more sense than the Swords Through the Heart because an argument is is a communication or a miscommunication, which is much more within the realm of Swords. Whereas I think having the imagery of the heart can be a little bit confusing sometimes, or just just not obvious because you know hearts are more the realm of the cup suit, so especially like for beginners. And I know when I was a beginner, I'm like, oh, swords, heartbreak, like not really. Whereas this, I think is maybe a little bit more close to what I think the Three of Swords is actually about. But again, like it's not brutal. This is not a brutal deck, which I know a lot of people um, would prefer. Not that I want a brutal deck, but I would quite like, like the devil in the tower to be a bit more intense, but that's okay. Four of Swords. What are these called? Is it a spoon bill? This is a very beautiful card. Looks like he's 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 meditating, which is pretty standard. Four of Swords kind of vibes, to be honest. A bit of a retreat. 
And the meditation is very much the mental retreat rather than somebody just like having a sleep, which is, is a different kind of rest. Five of Swords, this is cool. This is the kind of intense that I like to see. I really like the way that weather has been utilized in this card. Same as like I liked it in the Eight of Cups. Um, that's something I've really been playing with a lot recently is, is using different kinds of weather as metaphors for different like amounts or intensities of the elements, especially like in the court cards. Like the, anyway, that's a whole other, that's a whole other thing. But um, I like seeing this. Six of Swords, much more celebratory, celebratory, cele celebratory. Neither of those sound correct, um, but you know what I mean. Much more of a celebration than I usually see in the Six of Swords. The Six of Swords is, like I suppose it can be this kind of transition, but I think there's a bit of a, a bittersweet kind of tinge to the Six of Swords which I suppose you might feel upon graduating. I know I did, but it doesn't look like that in this card. Um, I suppose you could you could definitely interpret the the transition from like the difficult waters of, you know, having to study and write dissertations to the relatively calm waters of like having your degree and just moving forward. And there's a moment of uncertainty, definitely. I'm very much um, projecting onto this card because both times I graduated, I had no idea what I was doing next. Um, so there's definitely like a moment of uncertainty that I think is also present in the Six of Swords. Like, you might not know where you're going, but you're on the boat. Seven of Swords. Yeah, again, I want this to be a little bit harsher. This is definitely going to be a nice deck for like a certain kind of reading and for a certain kind of person when you don't want to scare people with the cards. But like, I'm really not getting a lot from this card, which is unfortunate. Because the Seven of Swords is always one that I like to see. I like to see how people do it because I think it's more complex than just somebody being a thief and a liar. And here we just have this bird leaving, which you know, this could be the Six of Swords, this could be a whole bunch of different cards, this could be the Eight of Cups for all I care. Alright, Eight of Swords. Not super sure what I'm looking at here. Like, I'm thinking of a migration of some kind, but I don't see how that fits in the Eight of Swords. And this bird is flying, this bird is not trapped. Potentially weighed down by something it doesn't need to be weighed down by, but that seems not what this card is getting at. So that's another one I want to look at the guidebook for. Was the, the Eight of Cups was one that I wasn't sure of either. Maybe it's an eights issue. Nine of Swords. This is not saying Nine of Swords to me. This is saying, I don't know, Page of Swords. I suppose he's stressed. Like, is that what we're supposed to be getting from this? Again, very much not a... Um, intense or harsh deck. Ten of Swords. I'm assuming this is a migration because they're in that V pattern. They're facing the wrong way but they are in a V pattern. Um, oh that's annoying. Are they facing the wrong way on purpose? I need to know. I need to know immediately. Completion. Drawing conclusions. A skein of geese fly overhead in formation taking turns at the lead. No, am I wrong? Or are they facing the wrong way? I thought you had one at the V, the, they went this way. You had one geese at the front, goose at the front, and then they were in a V behind. The guidebook doesn't think they're going the wrong way, so maybe I am wrong. I'm unsure. But <laughs> getting over that, um, they're all wearing little winter hats and scarves, so I'm assuming this is a migration um, from you know, for the winter, which for a not dark and spooky take on the Ten of Swords works, you know, it's a 10, so it's the ending, it's the, the and, and the seed of the new cycle starting, so a migration definitely works for a, for a chill take on the Ten of Swords. Okay, Page of Swords, oh, so this is similar to the Page of Cups, where they were made out of a bunch of fish, our Page of Swords is made out of a bunch of swords, that's kind of all there is to him. 
I like it visually though, I think that's cool. All right, Knight of Swords, I really like the energy in this Knight of Swords, the way he's holding his sword up. Kind of wish there was more like stormy energy behind him, but hey, Queen of Swords. I wish she looked a little bit more vicious. They've obviously, it feels like they've gone with more of a maternal vibe because she's in a nest, it seems like. And then, so like this should be the Queen of Swords. Like sword raised up, kind of spiky, scary looking branches behind him. I'm not in love with the courts, which to be fair, I'm often not in love with the courts in a deck, so no particular negativity towards this deck. Right, I love this Ace of Coins. I've loved all the aces so far. This buried coin underground. That's lovely. Oh, sweet. Two of coins. Not really getting the like balance energy from it though, which is a little bit of a shame. This is much more like, I don't know, a different card. <laughs> oh my God, this is incredible. Um, we've got three raccoons and a trench coat. Uh, well, it's not a trench coat, is it? But you get my point. They're working together to harvest apples. That's a fun take. I like it. Four of coins. We have a squirrel who has made a little house in a tree, which seems very unsquirrel behavior. It's that idea of like stability, which is very four. Five of coins. I'm not a hundred percent sure what I'm looking at. Is this like falling? I can't tell if we're very zoomed out and we're looking at just like a, um, oh god, what's it called? A valley between the mountains or if everything is like falling into a hole in the earth. It's a little bit hard to tell. All right, the six of coins. I'm not getting six of coins from this. Ideas of sharing or charity or reciprocity or um, like sharing of resources or what's the word? Not sharing, but... Um, giving out of resources. What is the word? I don't know. This really isn't saying six of coins to me, unfortunately. At seven of coins. This is very beautiful and reminds me how much I want the, um, the three trees tarot decks because <laughs> with the autumn vibes, that's definitely, definitely reminiscent of that. Um, I visually am a bit confused, but like, is this a den underground, but then also there's the sky, like the, the lighter sky behind it? I don't know. I'm not sure. The eight of coins. Okay, this makes more sense. Is this the, um, is it supposed to be like the, the redwood trees that are huge and massive and have taken a really, really long time, you know, to get to where they are because this deer is tiny in comparison. So I'm assuming that's what we're looking at is the the amount of time that these trees have been around. That's not exactly like skill mastery, is it? All right, nine of coins. We've got some ants. This should be more of an eight in my humble opinion. And in fact, there are eight ants. I could take this for a nine. Like, why not? This for a seven and this for an eight. Because I feel like, I don't know, this feels more like labor than mastery. Anyway, that's not what we've got. Got a nine of coins. This is not reminiscent of somebody enjoying the fruits of their labor. Hmm. Ten of coins. This is lovely. And I've got a couple of decks that I think have a similar kind of image in the ten of coins. Um, this like sharing of a meal altogether, which I do quite like. All right, the page. Got an ant made of ants. Again, very much the same as the other pages. A knight of coins is again mounted. 
he's chilling, he's considering his next steps. I do quite like this image actually, this is fun. I think the, the coin suit, oh, the coin suit has definitely been some of my favorite illustrations so far. Like the, the underground setting just feels very, very storybook, which obviously this deck is. Um, she's a lovely queen of coins. Okay, here the energy is definitely distinct between the king and the queen. Oh, sorry. Here the energy is definitely distinct between the king and the queen, which hasn't been the case in my opinion for the other courts thus far. And I like how in the, the king we've got like coins buried in the ground and like the roots which flow into his robe. Like I really like that king actually. Okay, and the ones, dragons. I love this ace, all the aces are amazing. No notes. Two of wands, he's got two heads. He's considering two paths. That's pretty two of wands. We're looking out, we're surveying our horizon, deciding what to do, where to go. That'll work. Three of Wands. Putting plans into motion. Digging. Digging a new, um, I don't know. What do fennec foxes live in? Holes in the ground, I guess. <laughs> um, four of Wands. The floor is lava not feeling the like celebratory vibes of the four of wands though this this seems more like avoiding danger and having to be like tactical and tread carefully five of wands this feels a little bit more intense and catastrophic like this do you, do you know what i mean this feels like i mean obviously this is some kind of like fire, forest fire that's taking out this whole forest, that seems a little bit more catastrophic than the five of ones usually does. Um, six of ones. <laughs> okay, this is a very funny image. Like, he's mastering a skill. I was gonna say, like, I understand the, um, the idea of, of, like, glory and celebration if we've if we're like making a statue of, of a dragon who's, I don't know, been super successful. Um, so that makes sense actually. Like the, the make, like the focus here, it seems to be on the, the building the statue or the carving the statue more than the like 15 minutes of fame moment in the sun, like glory of it. But I can make sense of that. Seven of Wands. I don't get this. I'm so curious to read the guidebook. It almost feels like, no, it doesn't even feel like elements have been switched. I'm just confused. <laughs> uh, seven of Wands, like a defense I'm not getting from this. This is very much a transition from the desert where the camel is fairly happy to be to something more lush and leafy. Okay, Eight of Wands is looking a lot more laid back than I usually, usually think of an Eight of Wands as. There's a community and a co-creation of, of music or a co, you know, it's, it's communal vibes which not necessarily the eight of wands that I would think of. Nine of wands. Okay, with this, with the paint, I suppose they're leaning more heavily into the, the creativity side of the wands. So maybe, maybe it's a moment of, of joint inspiration, I don't know. Um, nine of wands. Again, not really getting nine of wands from this. I'm getting everyone painting together. Hmm. 
and yeah, ten of wands. This looks this kind of looks like a five of wands energy. Everybody like standing all over each other. So I am oh, I'm dropping. I'm unsure of the whole wand suit. And then the page of wands is different to all the other pages. Why? Why is that? Why would they do that? That's frustrating. <laughs> That's really frustrating. Why is it the odd one out? Okay, Knight of Wands. He's on his steed. I wish he looked a little bit more enthusiastic. What is up with this one suit? Queen of Wands doesn't look super... I don't know, she's not bad. She's not bad. But again, like, I feel like the, the Queen and the King basically look the same. It's just one is seated and one is not. Whereas, like, there's not a lot of different energy going on. Okay, that was, that was, I have very rarely had such, like, opposite reactions to cards in a deck. Like, I think the first half of the majors, I really loved. And, like, most of the, do you know what? The minors I'm just not so sure about. It's definitely, I love that Five of Swords, though. I think... This definitely is one I want to work with the guidebook because I don't even know what's happening in half of these cards. Um, like, what is this nine of pen? That's still baffling to me. So I'm interested to work with the guidebook. Definitely. Um, and I guess I'll just see how I get on with it. I will say, I know that Melinda Lee Holm has done at least one other tarot deck. Isn't the illustrator, the illustra illustrator though? But, so... I don't know. I don't know if this, um, Rohan Daniel Eason, I don't know, um, if this is the first tarot, tarot deck or tarot project that they've done. Um, or maybe the direction was not very good. I don't know. I'm intrigued to see what the guidebook has to say. So far a bit undecided, right? This is massive. It's massive, it's clumpy, it's really zoomed in. Will she riffle? Okay, that's not so bad. It's gonna warp the cardstock for sure, but I don't think I care too much about warping the cardstock. Because if it's anything like the other deck I have from this publisher, the cardstock will warp all by itself. I would trim it, but it's not quite square. But if it's not square, although this one's pretty even, but the back isn't, that's annoying. It's like if they're inconsistently uneven, which I think for the most part they are. Mind you, I could trim and I could risk trimming the cream border. Because then the size would be better, and I think it doesn't need the black borders because they've all got this decorative border and the same um, heading at the bottom. Hmm. Okay, so it's already warping, um, but I think it will. Ugh, I don't know. It still is kind of clumpy. It's that horrid, like horrid cardstock that I don't like. But I'm. Oh, the fool is back on top. Okay, that's that's quite. Um, quite a nice coincidence. So, I think I'm gonna pull a card at random. King of Wands. Speaking through creative expression, planning out actions, decoding symbolic language, sensing the right thing to say, study of high magic. Gonna be honest, I'm not really seeing that in the artwork. But to be fair, a lot of the courts look very ambiguous, in a lot of decks, I mean. Okay, and then we do have, is this the same for each? Yeah. Ways to read this card in different kinds of readings. So we could do like a past, present, future, in the past, at present, on the horizon, from above and deep within. I'm not sure what other from above necessarily refers to. Okay, I'm kind of flipping through and I will say that I really, I really do like the um the keywords the general meanings that are at the top here i've been i've been flipping through the suit of wands which most of the imagery kind of baffled me a little bit i do like the keywords and the phrases 
they wouldn't necessarily be my take on the card like here the eight of wands which I was like this looks very relaxed and chill um and not eight of wands which for me eight of wands is it's a moment of inspiration you kind of got to strike while the iron's hot it's something fast moving it's something maybe unexpected it's something coming from an unexpected place maybe like the the eight of wands is not to me rehearsed performance established creative practice running a marathon like that's a much more sustained kind of feeling which uh, which is what I get from this image not necessarily what I would get from the average eight of wands but I do like how the text is lining up with the pictures is what I was where I was going with that so definitely one to work with with the guidebook like I say perhaps not so much without like oh there's nine of coins yeah this is not nine of coins to me higher education building understanding walking in the shoes of others pushing beyond personal limits like that's not what I would get from another nine of coins but it works for this so this is going to be really interesting to read with um but I think this is going to function for me more as like a tarot oracle hybrid than a tarot deck and tarot oracle hybrids is something I've been wanting to do a video about actually so let me know if you'd be interested in that okay I took a break to have some dinner and now the time has come to play with some deck pairs I don't know what's going to work with this I've pulled out truly what feels like half of my deck collection I love these bags these bags are making me think like like Art Nouveau, which I don't have any, <laughs> I don't have any Art Nouveau decks. Um, but let's, let's get to it. So where do I want to start? Okay, I'm going to start with like animal decks because I have a few that I'm curious about. Okay, this is kind of an animal deck. And the size difference is just ridiculous, but basically... I pull out a lot of stuff because I feel like I feel like there's a lot of elements here. Like it's an animal deck. It's a storybook fairy tale vibe. It's got this very detailed illustration. There's a lot of it's it's got like a fantasy vibe. Like there's a lot of stuff that could potentially work. And um I thought the wild unknown. That's what this is, by the way. It's the wild unknown pocket tarot. It's got that hand-drawn style. And also there's a lot of predominantly black and white in the wild unknown. So I thought the styles, there's a similarity, but there's enough of a contrast in the coloration that they might work well together. And visually, I really like the color palette's definitely different um, where there is color in the wild unknown anyway. Like the color palette in, in this, the Tarot of Tales is a lot more muted. And then when color shows up, in the wild unknown it's a lot brighter it's a lot more primary oh that eight of swords and that five of pentacles i really like these together you know and the wild unknown is one that has really surprised me with how much of an intuitive read it's been because i originally thought that the that it was too simplistic and too symbolic but I actually really enjoy reading with the Wild Unknown, so maybe some of that energy will translate over to the Tarot of Tales, which I'm a little bit um, dubious, or just unsure about, not dubious. I don't want to go in with like a negative expectation. This world still makes no sense to me. Um, I'm excited to read with it with the guidebook though. I think maybe, like I said, it might be a bit of a tarot oracle hybrid for me, and I might kind of read it as its own thing. Oh my goodness, that high priestess with how dark it is uh, with the with the death card. Like that's a very powerful duo. Okay, I'm gonna leave that one there. I pull these both out. <laughs> this is the Terra Arcana in the Oceanum Arcana because I wasn't sure which I'd like better and I just kind of wanted to play. Maybe I'll do them both at the same time. I've got both the wheel cards on top at the moment because like I said, I just did my just uploaded my favorite wheel cards video. I think there's a bit of a Glare. I really like the coating on these cards in person but it it kind of washes them out a little bit on camera so I apologize for that basically the reason I thought these would work together is because I think there's a bit of a similarity in the art style again it's that very hand-drawn there's a lot of detail in both art styles 
like here you can see we've got all this detail in the feathers and then Taylor Hulkquist Todd who does the these decks uh, uses a lot of like cross hatching um, and like mark making details to um, shade in her drawings and I like these as well the Arcane <laughs> um, decks I think have more depth to them they're darker color palettes generally but I really like these together and obviously the animal the animal theming works these two are a lot more well I say that as I come across this raccoon nicking seven swords um but these these two are a bit more realistic um definitely not the same like storybook fairy tale vibes of the tarot of tales i like these i really like these and these two decks are also some decks that i have been neglecting so it'll be nice to are oh, the whales mirroring each other there um it will be nice to have some pairs to pull them out with so i'll leave those there Okay, I also I also pulled out a couple of MJ Cullinane decks. This one is the Raven's Dream because I thought the dream equality would go with the storytelling vibes because each card in the Raven's Dream tarot is representative of a dream that the Raven has had. Um, there's not like a through narrative that each like each card in, in the Raven's Dream is its own story, which also seems to be the case with the Tower of Tales. And so I thought thematically they'd work really nicely together. And then obviously there's also a lot of animal symbolism in both. The art styles are very different, but I don't think that's necessarily gonna be an issue. And I think they go together quite nicely from what I can see on the viewfinder, actually. I don't think they completely mesh well, but I think they might read together quite nicely. But yeah, they obviously both have this kind of dreamy um, fairy tale theming to them. And I think the art styles are different enough. Like this is very hand-drawn, very detailed. And then this is digital art. So they are completely different. And there's details in this, but they're a different kind of detail. Like there's a lot of, a lot of outlined detail in the Tower of Tales. Whereas the Raven's Dream is this collage but digital but there are also a lot of details in the sense that there's just like a lot in each card. Like we have this King of Wands has the flame and the crown and the raven and the bear and the butterfly and the caterpillar and all these different kinds of flowers and the tree and this other little butterfly, the moon and the stars. And then this is like a little bit more straightforward in what's being represented. You've got a lizard on a lizard. That's not, it's, whatever that is in this kind of, like is it a cave it seems like and the detail is all in all in the mark making the outlining I need a different word for detail so yeah I'm unsure but it's not a no you know and then this second MJ Colin deck is the Enchanted Firaxa Tarot uh, this one is the mass market edition of the Enchanted Firaxa. And then this one is a Fae deck, the MJ deck. So I thought it also had a bit of a, maybe a bit of like an otherworldly energy to it, which might work. But I think, I think the colour palette's off. I think the Raven's Dream worked better because the colour palette was quite deep, which worked quite well with the Terror of Tales, especially with the black borders and all of the black outlining. So although the art style was completely different, the darker colors kind of grounded it. Whereas I think this Firaxa is just a bit too different because the color palette is a lot 
lighter and brighter and more saturated. And that just, that doesn't feel like it's working. Not to me anyway. Also, I hate the titles on this deck. They look so, like the way they cut the image off. Like I don't love these borders either, but whatever. Like that bothers me. Ooh, okay, these are good. Like this is the thing in these in the in the Faraxa deck, where the cut where the no, dragons where the um color palettes are darker, they look really good. The Guardian of the Night might also work in that case. I have another fairy deck. This is the Fairy Tarot by Natalie Hertz, and I think this is going to be a bit too. I love these border these edges that I did. They're like my pride and joy. Um, I think this is going to be a bit too bright and colorful, but again. Fairies, fairy tales, kind of magical story vibes. Ooh, I like those. But I think, hmm. Yeah, I don't think so. Although, I don't know. They might read together. I don't know. It's not, it's not a hard no. I like, I think they might work quite nicely together, actually. I'm definitely going to have to read with this one. It's not like an instant yes, but I think... There's something about, I don't know how it's showing up on the viewfinder. It's so funny, isn't it? How like a deck pair can look like a hard yes or a hard no and then I look in the viewfinder or I watch it back when I'm editing and I'm like, these look completely different to how they looked in real life. Um, something about the way the camera translates it, like shifts the the vibes of the cards, the energy of the cards. How many times have I said vibes in this video? Um, but anyway, I completely abandoned my train of thought but yeah there's just something about the they definitely this fairy deck has a very has a very like story put storybook cheeky magical whimsical vibe which I do think works quite well with the Tower of Tales so maybe they will read quite nicely together maybe they'll play off each other quite well also this is quite an easy straightforward Rider Waite Smith based deck and so it would be which I think maybe is what this needs because it isn't a straightforward Rider Waite Smith. I think it either needs a straight up Oracle or a straight up Tarot. Um, having said that, the next one I'm gonna show you is not a straight up Tarot. I've got the Hush Tarot and this was kind of a color palette pick. And again, the Hush Tarot is a little bit, a little bit um, kind of surreal and abstract and otherworldly in its imagery but the Hush Tarot is another one that is on that list of kind of tarot oracle hybrids for me. I think they look fabulous together. Ace of Swords, Knight of Swords, which is kind of a shame because I don't think I can read these together. <laughs> at least not at this point, not while this deck is still new to me and not while I still have. I did a whole thing about the Hush Tarot. I had it on a um, like anti-haul, not anti-haul, a deck declutter list and then I have never let go of it and then I did a playing with pairs video in January and this deck was in there and I still haven't really got to know it so like it's a whole, it's going through a process <laughs> um, but I think neither of them feel readable enough to me to read them together or they maybe, maybe I read them both as, oh I don't know I don't know. I feel like I almost could read the image, the image, the title, the title almost as like four separate things instead of reading like two cards side by side. I feel like I'm reading like there's a disagreement, there's a dispute, there's whatever the hell is going on here. Like image wise, this reads more like a five of wands and this reads mm, maybe like maybe like an eight of swords with the key and the spikes but then overlaying that with the three of swords energy and the queen of cups energy like I don't know that sounds actually very confusing when I say it out loud two swords birds in motion hmm oh those are pretty together those colors like the the reddish and the bluish I really like these visually. I have no idea how to read them together. So please let me know how you might read these together. Aside from just reading them as two tarot decks, because as we've established, neither of them feel like they're going to read like standard tarot decks for me. Okay. 
Another slightly weird and otherworldly deck is the Terra Nuage, which I absolutely have not played with enough, which is unfortunate because it's kind of fantastic. Again, color palette and the, the, the black kind of ink work. And then also a bit of like a weird otherworldly vibe. The Tarot Nuage has like these little impy, spritey, goblin-y creatures. And um, I think it's supposed to take place in this like slightly otherworldly place. Ooh, the Tower and Death. This deck also has a bit of that kind of slightly more intense slightly harsher vibe that I feel like is missing from the Tower of Tales. Oh, I like these together. I really do. King of Swords, King of Wands. Yeah, I really like these together. Ace of Cups, Eight of Cups. Sad Penguin. Mmm, I like these. Ooh, I definitely think these will work. Like, do you see what I mean? This is a much more intense tower than, um, it was just back here, wasn't it? Yeah. Like, very different. Very different, like, state. Like, this, it almost feels like this is the aftermath. Like, it really does feel like this is the aftermath. This is, like, a ruin that's been abandoned for a while. There's plants that have grown up in the ruins, whereas this is very much mid- tower moment the lightning is striking the top of the tower is falling off there's flames there's these little demony things there's people like it's it's very much a, not opposing just different stages of the tower and it invites a different focus on what side of the tower you're looking at so i really like these the nuage with the ah death and judgment they just, you know, I mean, this has the that like external call to judgment, whereas the judgment in this card, which I don't know where it's got to, um, felt much more like a self-propelled thing, which doesn't really feel like judgment to me, but hey. Um, okay, while we're going with like story, otherworldly vibes, I kind of want to see what the Hobbit Harry looks like with it, because this is a, a fairy tale story type deck, and the Hobbit is a story. And it's a fantasy story of that, so it's, you know, it works well in a spot like dragons and trolls and all sorts of happening. Lots of trees going on in the, in the Hobbit as well. But I don't think the art styles are working. And I don't think it's helped by the fact that we've got one black border deck and one white border deck. And the colour, yeah, that's not working for me. The colour palettes are too off. Two aces though, that's cute. Fire and water. No, not water. Ace of coins. I'm looking at the water. Yeah, that's that's a no from me, I think. Speaking of black borders, I want to try it with the Midnight Magic. Which has a dark background. And so I think color palette wise, it's gonna be a hit. Oh, I think art style wise, it may be a miss though. Cause the, um, like I said, there's a lot of detail in outlining. Whereas the Midnight Magic has this very soft, hazy kind of glow to it. And I think they're a little bit at odds and I really don't like how it's coming up on my viewfinder. I don't know how it's looking, how it will look on my computer, but. Like it kind of works in person, but I don't like how it's looking on the viewfinder. Like they just look too different. They also don't feel like they're talking to each other. Do you know what I mean? Like when I was reading with that fairies tarot, I like wasn't doing like real readings. I wasn't like interpreting the cards, but um, they felt like they would talk to each other as these, they're just, they're having two entirely separate conversations, which is a shame. Because I love this deck and I like pairing it with things. Okay, moving uh, swiftly or not so swiftly on. This is the Theodore Pavlov Tarot. I don't like that background colour of the Theodore Pavlov. It's a bit, it's a bit of a bit of a bright, 
beigey kind of ivory. But again, lots of black outlining and detail work is why I thought they might look good together. And they don't look horrible. And when the colors match up, they look lovely. See what I mean? There's a, there's a wall in the sun card. But no, I think they're too, too different, which again is a shame. Although I love the Fyodor Pavlov um, and I do not need encouragement to use it by pairing it with things. Like I have some decks that I only seem to really reach for when I'm pairing it with another deck, whereas like the Fyodor Pavlov, it's my daily pull this week along with the Citadel Oracle. Like it needs no help to get me to use it. Yeah, I'm not in love with that. Okay, did I have anyone else I wanted to try? Yes. Okay, so this is more fairies. The border color is throwing me off, but again, same reasons, like the, the magical fantasy, otherworldly vibes. That color palette is good. I don't think that the art styles are vibing though, which is unfortunate. I also don't really know the fairies deck well enough, and I think it's better suited to being worked with alongside something that I do feel like I know. Otherwise I'm just a little bit, a little bit lost, I think. So that I think is a no. Is this the only Oracle deck I pulled out? It is. Why is that? I swear I have loads of Oracle decks and then whenever I try and grab one, I'm like, where are they? Do I even, do I even own any? The Woven Path Tarot. Oh, no, no chance. Well, no. Well, no. No. No, that's unfortunate. I was thinking um, the, well, definitely not that art style. The, um, again, the kind of, this isn't necessarily fantasy, the, the woven path. It's medieval tapestry inspired, but it has a lot of, detail and I thought that the, the medieval tapestry style would work well with like these borders and a lot of the I don't know just a lot of the styling in this deck but it is not turning out that way unfortunately yeah see what I mean like this detailing like in cards like this it's just that because this is a collaborative deck the woven path there were 78 different artists so although the deck is the most cohesive collaborative deck I've ever seen it's still not super consistent as to like what kinds of like you see here like there's line work versus not and there's different kinds of breast strokes and color palettes and this looks more watercolory and you know it's it's different because it's a collaborative deck that's lovely whereas like this kind of but yeah that is a no, unfortunately. Maybe last, <laughs> but not least. This is the Occult Ornithology Majors Only deck. This is a bird deck, and I'm gonna do this as though this is an oracle, actually, because I really liked how the Occult Ornithology paired with the Hush Tarot, where I was using the Hush Tarot like, almost like I'd use an oracle. Uh, so I had the, the bird in the center, the major in the center is like the defining energy, or I didn't know a running theme or whatever, and then card either side like a little bit more like an oracle. But I, I'm not sure. I don't feel like they're talking to each other for me. I had hopes with like the black borders, but oh, that's gorgeous. But I don't think so. These draw me in in a different way. And so they don't really feel like they're gelling. All right, was that it? I think that was it. I'm gonna pop it next to the Citadel for color palette reasons. See if that works. I think the Citadel um, thematically is one that I could work with almost any deck because it's basically a archetype deck. And this is also very story-based. This is based on like fantasy and 
RPGs. And um, yeah, I mean, it's black and white with gold and red details. Like you can't really go wrong with the color palette, can you? And um, I think they will read nicely together. The Taylor, attention to detail, pride with justice in the world. And actually I think it could be really interesting reading the guidebooks together because the guidebook for this, it puts each of these characters in the fantasy setting. There's like a, the Citadel is a, is a setting that's been built for this. So it kind of tells you like who this character is and what they're doing and then what, you know, advice they have to offer or whatever. And then um, this guidebook as well for the Tower of Tales, it looks like it also contextualizes the image a little bit and then gives you different interpretations for the kind of reading. So I think that those would read really interestingly together. The Runaway, Secrets and Running from Problems with the Two of Coins and Strength. Well, neither of these are running. These are both very relaxed cards for cards that generally look a bit more like high stakes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. I do like the Citadel Oracle as well. I like the Citadel. I loved the Nuage. I liked these animal decks. I was really intrigued by the Fairy Tarot. The Wild Unknown was also good. So I've definitely got some pairs to play with. Uh, and I don't know how long I've been filming, but it's a long time. So I am going to leave, leave this one there. I would love to hear if you've got this deck, how you get on with it. If you also, like me, were a bit puzzled as to the images and how they match up or don't match up with the Rider Waite Smith and like where you've got with it, I'm definitely going to have a good dig into the guidebook. Uh, which I didn't really do in this video, but I showed you an entry and it doesn't look like there's a lot of additional material in it. It's um, it's a guidebook to the cards. So yeah, let me know if you have this deck, if you're interested in this deck, if I've put you off this deck by being so confused about the nine of coins, <laughs> um, all that good stuff. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for spending some time with me. If you have made it this far into the video, I really appreciate it. Thanks for sticking with me. Uh, give me a like if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.